when you come into an Orthodox church for the first time, one of the first things you're going to notice is iconography. These are spiritual paintings of Christ, his saints, and different biblical events and events surrounding the church. They're not realistic paintings, but they're designed to convey spiritual reality. When Christ became man, he became matter. And becoming matter, he could be depicted. If God had remained transcendent, as the Father is transcendent, we would never have been able to record his image. As Christ became man, we were able to depict him in paint. So I'm holding right now one of my icons. It's Luke, the proto-iconographer. So St. Luke, who wrote the Gospel of Luke, is also by tradition known as the first iconographer, and he painted the Theotokos and Christ as the first icon. And so this image of the Theotokos of the sign is his first icon, the first icon in the tradition of the Orthodox Church's iconography. Icons are often called windows into heaven. We know that these are paintings. These are not idols. These are not things that we worship. But veneration, respect, and love that is shown to the icon passes from the icon to the prototype, to the subject of the icon. I'd like to give a little thought experiment. Imagine a soldier under fire in a foxhole, and he's about to bed down for the night, and he pulls out a photo of his wife or his sweetheart, and he kisses that photo and puts it back in his, in his pocket. Now, does he love that piece of paper? Is the photo the thing that he loves? Or is the thing that he loves his wife or his sweetheart? Well, obviously, it passes from that paper to the one that he loves. And so this is what icons are for us. The remembrances of the saints, of their lives, of Christ, of what he's done for us. And it is the great cloud of witnesses that is surrounding us is visible for the Orthodox. We are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Yes, we are. In the church, all the time, they're present with us. These windows into heaven, these people who have made it, these people who stand with Christ now, praying on our behalf. We don't pray to icons. We don't pray to saints in the way that we pray to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray and we ask the saints to intercede for us. Have you ever had a grandmother or a grandfather, or an aunt or an uncle who seem to have a line to God? Do you ever ask them to pray for you? That's what the saints do for us. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, well, my grandmother, she's, she's with God now and she's praying for me and she's bringing my, my supplications to God. That's what the saints do for us. They are here present with us in the icons. They're not just paintings. They're very seldom will you see icons with signatures because artwork is about the artist. Icons are about the subject. So when a person comes up to an icon to venerate the icon, the tradition is to cross yourself twice and bow, kiss the icon, the hand of the, of the person uh, depicted most often, and then to cross yourself and bow a third time obviously for the Trinity. Everything is done in threes for the Holy Trinity. When you enter into the church, it's, it is proper to cross yourself when you come into the church, venerate the icon of the feast that's usually at the back of the church, the icon of the feast, the icon of the patron of the church, and then come forward and venerate the, the icons of Christ and the Theotokos. In our church, we also have a family album of saints where your saint will be on the wall of the church, and it's good to go and venerate the icon of your saint as well.